King David, how many of you love King David? He was a true worshipper. Not only does the Bible say that King David was a man after God's own heart. In fact, even before he became king, he was actually a teenager. God already called him a man. Because you're not uh, by your age, just by your physical age. God looks at us at our, at our spiritual age, our spiritual maturity. And God looks at a, at a young uh, person, a teenager, and says, I have found a man, a man, a man after my own heart. David was a man after God's own heart. Do you know there's a difference between just being uh, friends and you know, buying a gift for a friend and buying a gift that is on your friend's heart? And I don't want to be a church whereby we're just singing songs because, you know, we have to for half an hour. And there's a predictability about church, you know. But how many of you will go like, you know, if I want to be a Christian, uh, I want to be the best I can be, meaning I want to be like David. I, I, I don't want just to be uh, a man after God's heart. Maybe the word own is very significant. I want to be after his own heart. I want to get personal with God. That means, uh, after his heart means I remember his birthday, someone's birthday. I buy the person a tie. It could have coconut tree on it. You know, and, uh, and, uh, and someone sipping pina colada by the side of the, you know, and, and he said, I bought you a gift. And that could be, I want to buy him a tie, but I remember seeing that he was looking at this tie. And it's not just his heart, but his own desire. What, is, what pleases God today? I want to touch God's heart. I want to come close to Him. I want to know, not just, I, I don't just want to say I love Him, I, I really want to love Him. And I want to give to Him what He really wants of me. See, sometimes people give uh, what we want to give. But how many of, you, of, us, of us will give what He wants us to give? Sometimes offering also the same thing. Huh? We just give what we want to give. But how many of us will give what He wants? You see, church huh, can be one or the other Seriously. And, and you can survive and continue to do church like that. Every Sunday we come and do what we want. We sing what we want. We come in what time we want. We leave what time we want. We do. And that, I, I tell you, that's not worship because there's no God there. The only God is you. Because you do by what you want. But the time comes when everything switches. We start living by what He wants. And you say, God, what do you want from me? He says, oh, I got $20, but He says, I want 40 Oh, but God has everything. Doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes he tests us. Who is God? And so Joshua surrendered to the Lord before his enemies surrendered to him. Now, I want, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 15 now because I want to say, say something very quickly about David and uh, tell you that it's not just the past, not just David of the past that we are thinking about or wishing for I want to let you know that God was so impressed with King David that the Bible actually says for the future, somebody say future. How many of you know that we are looking forward? The way forward, the way forward for X Church. What is the way forward? What is our, does our future look like? Actually, in X 15, God says, you know, X 15 verse 16, after this, I will return. Everybody there? After this, I will return and I will rebuild. What? I will rebuild the tabernacle of who? See, God loved Abraham too. But He didn't say, I will come back and rebuild Abraham's tabernacle. He didn't say, I will come back and rebuild uh, Moses' tabernacle. He didn't say, I will come back and rebuild the great temple of Solomon. Are you with me, friends? Are you with me? Because we've got to get this right. What is God going to do at the end? He already tells you. He's going to bring back the David worship now. That is the future. That is the future. X church is going to move into a, a Davidic. God, I want to give you everything. Even if people call me a fool for dancing for you, uh, God, X church has come to a place whereby we're dancing. We're loving Him. We're praising Him. We're losing our voices if we have to. We're sweating. You know, because we want to give God what He wants. He's got to be God. He's got to be God. He's got to be God of X church and your life and my life. Because I tell you what, when you've learned to surrender, you start seeing your enemies. Surrender to you. 
But we want to bow our knee, we want to bow our hearts, we want to bow our lives. It all begins from inside here. God said uh, to his own servant, uh, Samuel, he said, I, you know, I don't look at the outward appearance. Man looks at that. I look at the heart. And out of the heart flows an abundance of God. I want to give you everything. I want to give you the best. Out of your heart goes, God, I don't care what my neighbor says. I'm going to clap my loudest clap because you deserve nothing less. You deserve nothing less. Ex church, we're moving forward because God said, I will rebuild the tabernacle of David. Let's read it, which has fallen down. Don't you think it's sad if that's the picture of the church? The tabernacle of David has fallen down. That means it is in ruins now. But if you don't, if you're not talking about the tabernacle of David as a physical, then you're talking about it as a spiritual. So could it be that the spiritual has fallen down? The spiritual has you know, broken up, the spiritual have gone into a messy place whereby, you know, we come out with songs like, uh, I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. It's all about you. Gee, why those kind of songs? Because the Lord is leading back His church to that place whereby we're not just playing church. Are you still with me, friends? We're not just coming to tickle our ears, but we come coming and say, God, you are God. I am not, but you have all the answers I need and I worship you. I bow down before you. I surrender to you the way forward. God is going to restore what is fallen down. He says, I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up. He says, so that the rest of mankind, verse 17, may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name. How many of you believe that when we worship, this church will grow? Because God is going to call people by His Spirit to a place where there is true worship. Where people don't just sing, but they surrender. People don't, don't just sing, but they surrender. Are you with me, friends? Oh, it's going to be great. Gentiles, unbelievers will be called, drawn, pulled, that people might come and seek the Lord. How many of you know that even your friends are seeking? Your friends are seeking. Just they don't know where to seek sometimes. So they seek you know, this and that and bomos and, 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 and I don't know what they seek, where they seek, how they seek, but there's a longing, there's a hunger in people's hearts. And I pray that they will know where to come because you will know how to bring them. And when they come, they will say, oh, I never want to leave. Because God's presence is here. So the way forward, worship. Understanding the power, purpose, and practice. The Bible says, enter His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Psalm 100, verse 4. How many of you know that worship brings us into God's presence? So when we worship the Lord, we actually come, we enter in with thanksgiving. His courts with praise. We come in with that. Not with big time money or, or degrees or theological understanding. No, we just come in in humility and say, God, you are God and you just deserve all the worship. All that I can give you, all that my strength can give you. God, you just, you're just awesome. Praise the Lord. Oh, I didn't mean that to bother the other church. But you know, this is, God is awesome. God is awesome. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Worship brings us into God's presence. But listen to this other word found in Psalm 22 verse 3. God is enthroned in the praises of His people. Meaning, meaning that when you start praising God, His presence comes down and He builds a throne. When you're worshipping, it's not just He bringing you in, He comes down. And he comes among his people and he builds. And throne means authority. Throne means a place of judgment where he will judge, you know, uh, those who are coming against you. And the enemy is, you know, he's, he's about ready to judge uh, those who are coming against you and, and pulling you down and frustrating you and, and trying to kill you. You know, God is, is coming down in his throne. And of course, his throne is a throne of grace also. And mercy. And there's loving kindness. Faithfulness. But how many of you know if you could only see it in the Spirit? that there is an amazing throne right in the middle of this place. And God, you know, surrounding with angels, ministering angels and His people, glorifying Him. Is He too high for us? No, He has come down for us. And He inhabits the praises of His people. So what is the truth? The truth is not just that worship brings us into God's presence. The truth is also that worship brings God into our presence. And in His presence great things happen. I tell you, there's nothing like the presence of God. 
the next time you get called into God's presence, please go. Please go. You know, not just heaven. Huh? Some people say, oh, God, get called into God's presence, please go. No, no, no. I'm not asking you to die so quickly. But in His presence, His presence, His presence, His manifest, awesome presence, there is nothing like the presence of God. I tell you, it's so good. So awesome. I went into His presence. Huh? You know, in His presence, you get at least four C's. Number one, coaching. You get coaching. For any problem you have in your life, uh, He will give you direction. He will give you confirmation. Okay? He will give you leading, guidance. He will give you all that you need in His presence. That's why there's fullness of joy. Because people go, ah, yeah! I found it. I got it. And so you get coaching. You also get clarity. Oh, I see. Ah, no wonder. And that clarity brings peace, no? But not only clarity, He gives you confidence. You just want to get up of your, of your knees uh, and go win the world. No? After you just taste 10 minutes of God, 15 minutes of God, half an hour of God, one hour, two hours of God, you just want to go out there and go like, yes, I can! Yes, I can! Yes, I can! You just want to do it because God gives you confidence and courage. In God's presence, I can! I'm strong! I have all the money I need. In your presence, God. That's why I love coming into God's presence. Let, let's be the church that truly knows how and what it means to worship God. Everybody still with me? To know how to draw into His presence and draw out from His presence. To know how to draw into His presence and out from His presence. How many of you love that? Want that? Come on. Let me see your hands. Wave it up high. Say, yeah, I want more of God. I want more of God. I want more of His presence. Come on, God. Take over. Take over my life. Take over my marriage. Take over my family. Let me have a glimpse of you today. And I tell you, your marriage will be sweeter. Let me have a glimpse of you today. And my children will seem like they can do no wrong. I, I'm telling you, it's going to be great. Amen?